politicians who are good on the radio, like Franklin Roosevelt, um, it quickly becomes a powerful tool for them, not only during campaigns, but once they're in the White House. Franklin Roosevelt uses the fireside chats on the radio to go over the heads of newspapers and newspaper editors who were still overwhelmingly Republican in the 1930s. He uses radio to go over their heads and go directly to the American people to sell his programs, to promote the New Deal, to promote himself. Um, and what Roosevelt realizes instinctively, because there were no political consultants at the time to advise him, was that the radio was a very different medium. The radio brought you into people's homes, which meant that you needed to be cooler. You needed to tone down your presentation. Very few people like to invite um, others, particularly politicians, into their living rooms and then have them yell at you. But that was the standard form of political communication. Prior to the radio, you went to a rally, you spoke to a large crowd, and you tried to be as dramatic and expressive as possible. You tried to use dramatic arm gestures, you tried to speak very loudly and dramatically to get people's attention and keep it. Roosevelt instinctively knew that you had to be conversational on the radio because people were listening to you in their living rooms and that's what they expected to see, to hear in their living rooms. Um, as I say, after the advent of radio, if you don't grasp that fact and if you're not good at communicating conversationally, you won't succeed in American politics. In a sense, it's a preview of what television will do where you have to learn not only to speak conversationally, but you need to look good on television as well. And so that's a whole other hurdle that politicians are going to have to overcome um, in subsequent decades.